Hi, I'm Sherry Damaris. Welcome to Macro Magic. And today I have a very special guest with me, a longtime friend, Saul Goodman. And Saul actually started out with us in around 30 years ago, uh, working with people um, and had a shiatsu school and an international shiatsu school and written, um, wrote a couple books on shiatsu massage. And then he's developed his practice into actually Shintai. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, Shatsu, how he got started, and then what he does now, which is an amazing treatment. Um, not only does he, he work on individuals, but he runs a school um, that's virtual. So anywhere in the world, you can sign up and for classes and watch what he does. So welcome, Saul. Thank you, Sherry. And I'm really excited to have you here. Great to see you. Yes, and um, I just am always in awe of your work. I think that throughout the years you have developed such an in, in-depth, um, really intuitive way of looking at the body and the mind and understanding how they work. And I'm just really always amazed at your work and how healing um, you know, it really is. So I'm really Thank excited you. that you came on the show today. It's my pleasure, for sure. And um, <clears throat> tell me a little bit about how you got started, you know, originally in body work and then how that developed into Shintai. Well, I think I had a natural affinity toward body work and I didn't know that. And uh, I was a full-time musician and I was looking for a healthier lifestyle, which sometimes those two things don't go together. And I walked into a natural food store called the Essene Natural Foods on South Street. That's a long time ago. And there was a, a sign up on the bulletin board that said shiatsu classes. And I thought, interesting, because I think it said something about energy fields or meridians. And you know that just struck a chord with my uh, subconscious that, oh, I should check this out. So, and how old were you then? Uh, I was uh, 26 or 7, yeah, or even maybe no, actually, I was 23. And from 23 years old, you created, um, after taking classes, your own school, which was in Bucks County. Right, in Langhorne, PA. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we started out with a 30-hour uh, course, and then it developed to a 60, and it eventually wound up being like a 560-hour program, which at that time became the requirement in Pennsylvania. Yes, and I actually went through the whole course mm -hmm. in 1983, okay. a year-long course, and I remember your first words in that course were, you're gonna leave a different person than what oh. you came. So through all the, the body work that you did, and we see the, your uh, photo up on the screen of you mm -hmm. in the class, um, I still remember those days where you would just really amaze all of us in, in your technique and mm -hmm. your diagnosis and your way of looking at at the body. Um, so that to me was amazing. And then you took another step, leap forward into doing Shintai. Yes. Which um, many of our viewers might not be familiar with. Well, the first thing that uh, motivated me to develop the Shiatsu school was that there was a lot of information about Shiatsu, but it was not coordinated. It was not structured very well. So I wanted to create a program that would take a, a person step by step in, the, in their development so they could really give a coherent treatment with good evaluation skills. So that was the first thing. And since it's just a, uh, a natural interest of mine, and I have a lot of enthusiasm for it, and something I think about a lot, I started to notice things uh, in the shiatsu work that were there, but they weren't well defined. And when I went into those things, I found out that some of them were a whole world within themselves. Like in shiatsu, you'll work with joints, and uh, you do very general work with that, but then you can do very specific work with that. And then once you start to do that, there's very interesting evaluations that you can make from those specific things. Mm -hmm. So I saw a lot of things changing from the shiatsu treatments, and then I saw other things that didn't seem to be really changing along with that. And I wanted to find out why, and that led me on a path to go deeper into the structure of the body, but also more into the um, energy system of the body. So it's a kind of two different directions, but in the end they are all synthesized into what makes us who we are. 
And I know with shiatsu massage, many of you might not even know what shiatsu is. Shiatsu is finger pressure. Mm -hmm. So putting pressure on meridian points in the body, correct? Well, that is a typical um, way to think about it, and it's one of the styles. But shiatsu itself really uh, points to the idea of balance of the body, balance of the energy system. And uh, having met practitioners from all over the world, particularly the Japanese and the Chinese practitioners, and that's where shiatsu techniques originated, using kind of like a manual physical therapy to affect the energy system, we found out there was just all kinds of styles all called shiatsu, and some of them were very different. And then as will happen, people were you know, discussing which was the right way and the wrong way. And you know, what I tried to do is keep my eye on the essential part, which was how to balance energy and how to balance the system. And then once you get into that, that's a multi-dimensional task right there. It's physical, it's chemical, it's emotional, it's you know, psychological and beyond. So that's what kind of went along with the desire to expand the work into Shintai and then into what I'm doing now mostly, which is light body activation. And what is light body activation? We have a logo up here that sort of... It yeah, the logo is trying to portray the uh, progression that we um, go through to develop our uh, higher senses, let's say, our expanded senses, um, starting out from you know, a single cell or even at the atomic level, and then the progression of species that took place on this planet till the time we became human, we became aware, we became awake. And now we're going through uh, a transformation of consciousness. So the logo is trying to portray that progression. Okay. And I oftentimes, uh, I've had a lot of treatments from you lately. And I, I'm so glad you're on the show to answer some of my questions, too. Mm -hmm. Because it's a different treatment than shiatsu massage. Like when you go just to have a massage, like a regular massage versus a shiatsu massage, that's different. And then from a shiatsu massage to um, shintai or light body activation, that's different as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm beginning to understand a little bit more of how you're, you're working the body. You're actually looking for imbalances when you look at the body and trying to reestablish those balances. I mean, that is the idea that's carried forward from the basic shiatsu idea. Mm -hmm. And then when you go into the shintai work, uh, like I said before, it's multidimensional. You, and you, what you're trying to do is when you're working with someone is to see where is the priority of that treatment. Is it in the structural part? Is it in the, uh, the merid acupuncture meridian part? Or is it in the energy body, the chakras? And so we teach different assessment tools so that the practitioner can zero in on what is the level of priority of the mm -hmm. system and then start to work there. Because that's where the body's most receptive and that, on that level of priority is where you can get the most accurate information about what needs to be done in that mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a thing that we have also a structured course to teach people and the technique that they can use to facilitate those changes. And also it's a work in progress. I'm learning new things about it all the time and that keeps it pretty fresh and also keeps my enthusiasm going for it. And that naturally led to the light body work, which is something that somebody might think is very different, but I see as a continuum really from the seed that was planted in the shiatsu days through Shintai, and now how I can use this light body work to continue um, working with clients and working with groups of people. And, that's and the great. most awesome thing about it really for me, and I say this a lot, is how it affects my family life. Oh, that's and great. And my personal relationships. So that that's really so makes nice. me excited about we're it. We're going to um, cut for break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to you a little bit more about what is the treatment, how can you sign up, you know, to learn how to administer it, and more about diagnosis. Okay. Thanks. I'm ready. <laughs> Just... An informed and confident decision on a Medicare plan that meets your needs, lifestyle, and budget. Call me today for a free, no obligation, Medicare benefits consultation, 856-226-4800. Boardwalks built for fun. Legendary rock and roll clubs. This is how we do it. 
casinos by the ocean. Now that's New Jersey. 130 miles of beautiful beaches, solid rock, and everything in between. Look in the window. Now that's New Jersey. Burlington County College. Is now Rowan College at Burlington County. Still the same great faculty. At a community college ranked top 50 in the nation. Basically, we earn more and pay less. RCBC students are accepted at Rowan University after graduation. And get a bachelor's degree for around $30,000. Online and Mount Laurel students get a 15% Rowan University tuition discount. And at many scholarship opportunities. So you earn more and pay even less. Rowan College of Burlington County. Your path to success. They are the greatest fighting force the world has ever seen. But what does it take to strengthen our service members? What does it take to let them know that we stand behind them, wherever they are? What does it take to bridge the distance? and keep them connected to family, home, and country? And what does it take to prepare them for their future when their service to the nation is complete? What does it take to strengthen our service members so they can be the greatest force for good in the world? It takes a force. Be a force behind the forces. Share a message today at force.uso.org. I want to be a contender. I want a warm belly to sleep on. A big house. How do I look? Do, do I look good? I want to play hard. My nails done. Once a month. I want. I want. I want a home. I just want a home. I want someone to love. Last year, more than 30,000 companion animals came to us without homes. 20,000 of them were felines. Let's make some homes together. Add us on social media to watch bloopers, behind the scenes footage, previews. Hi, I'm Sherry Damaris and I'm here with Saul Goodman, a very good friend of mine, and we're talking about light body activation and his work with Shintai. And um, we discuss a little bit about Shiatsu Massage and how you got started and um, how that developed over the years um, of your studies into this really great practice that you offer, um, both individually and in teaching um, through the Shintai School is light body activation. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about what light body is and um, what you have seen in people or like how you have seen people change through getting treatments. Okay, so that's, that's a lot right there. The late body activation is um, an event that happens when a person becomes aware, consciously aware of an energy field that's operating within their body, but also operating around the physical body. And there's a, a constant interchange going on. Now that's happening for everyone, but at the moment that that really registers and the person starts to get a sense of it, that's when the activation begins to take place. And, and what's amazing is I've had some of your recent treatments, and I mentioned to you right, right after the treatment, I drove home and I actually felt like a wave of motion mm -hmm. sort of around me for like about an hour. And you said that's a good sign. Yes. I wasn't losing my mind. No. Not <laughs> and really. um, you said that that's actually um, making me more aware of my body and how it's interacting with the environment and the reason that's good is because a lot of us sort of numb ourselves out or um, not pay attention to that energy is that correct that is correct and the um the whole idea of the motion that you experienced you could say that's also information and it's something that is not common for you to experience and so it signifies that cer certain things are taking place uh, through a process of internalizing various kinds of stress, physical, chemical, emotional, mental, it constricts and compresses the body. Mm. And the body, which has like a natural 
motion to it from every cell to every joint to every organ is in a constant micro motion of expansion and contraction and those stress events that either happen all at once like a trauma or gradual stress events that may happen over a period of time like let's say working in an environment that's um, where there's some very aggressive factor that makes you feel stressed but it's like a micro development that you internalize that what we call stress, it's, a, it's actually a nebulous word, has a, um, a consequence in the physical body and it causes the soft tissue system of the body to constrict. That all then will constrict blood flow, energy flow, and it wow. will lock a person down into the time period where that stress took place. So it becomes an internalized information about that time period that then starts to overlay on future events so that while we're experiencing the present it's being filtered by what happened in the past and so you could say that we're not operating on real-time information Wow and then how important is that like if you're even eating a healthy diet or um, you know exercising but you're still having memories or um, muscle reactions to some stressor in the past how that clouds the present and really creates disease. Well, I think food quality and water quality is very, very important. And when the system is in a stress state, uh, and oftentimes stress, or this compressions that I'm talking about, will manifest in the digestive process, as we know. And when people experience what they call stress, it disrupts their digestion. That means absorption, uh, elimination, etc. And so, um, you know, that's, that's what's taking place from, from stress. And during treatment, what we try to do is identify that stress system and release it from the system. Wow, that's yeah. huge because <clears throat> so many people are walking around with all that tension and stress, especially from trauma, all sorts of trauma. As a guidance counselor, I saw it in children. Mm -hmm. And as a macrobiotic chef and counselor, I mm -hmm. see it all the time with people that, um, you know, that has to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And I assume that when you go through these treatments that your emotions or, you know, your mental state too changes. Yeah, I mean, it's a feedback releases. loop in both directions, you know, toward becoming more emotionally chaotic. Then that affects the body and then the body affects the emotions and that becomes like a negative loop. And as the person recovers from that and releases these compressions and there's more of this energy or what we call life force begins to flow back through the system then it becomes mm -hmm. like a positive loop on the emotions and so encountering different situations we may uh, take away from that something you know more positive but when we're in the negative loop then we see a lot of things as being way more negative than they really are oh. and the thing that I wanted to say also was that when the system is in that stress compression, even if we're taking really good quality food, that it can degrade the quality of the food and acidify it or cause it really not to digest and become stagnated within the body. Wow, So that's I've huge. seen people change over to really healthy diets like macrobiotics, and I'm a, a big um, you know, enthusiast for macrobiotics, but they could not absorb a lot of what was in the food they couldn't break it down because their system was already in a state that um, wouldn't allow that to happen um, thoroughly. Yeah, trauma I'm state. Sure you've seen it. I've seen it tons of times. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that your work is so important. And it's amazing to me how you can sort of unwind that or find it within the body system and start to open it up again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can identify stress patterns within the physical body. And like I said, when you tune in on the priority, like where is the system most tied up in this moment? Or where is the information that it's most willing to receive in this moment? Then it will start this unwinding process, hmm. you know, decompressing, allowing more flow of life force through the system, which means blood flow, nervous system response, breathing response, and all that as well. You know, when we say energy, we also mean nervous system. Blood is energy, so we mean mm -hmm. all of those systems are simultaneously and synergistically changing and reviving and regenerating so the person over time and it is I think 
most healthy when it's a gradual process. And a lot of people have this conditioning where they want it to happen like overnight. Oh, wow. But it's, it's more healthy and more penetrating when it's a gradual unfolding. And then what's unfolding also can work its way into the whole life system, which is really important. So when you say unfolding, about how long, like a year, two years of regular treatments, or I guess it depends on the person too. Yeah, I mean, one good thing about the uh, treatment process is that it's accumulative. And so I've worked on someone really? and then seen them, you know, nine months later oh, because wow. they lived in Italy or something like that. And I could see that the treatment's working the whole time. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Um, because it just gives the body that information of, you know, this stress system. And, you know, I have to recognize that stress has a physiological mechanism to it. It affects the, me you know, the physiology of the body. And that, um, you know, when there's a stress event, it causes this um, restricting of, mm -hmm. of energy flow, you can say, or life force flow, but contained within that is always information. So it's also an information disconnect when the compression is there and a recovery of more accurate real-time information as it releases. Okay, so as it releases, your body actually has the knowledge and the know-how hidden back there. So as it releases, that opens up, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah because even, there's even a physiology to the so-called inner guide. You know, we have an internal GPS that gets skewed through these compressions or, you know, this interference on real-time information and the accuracy of that GPS, that internal mechanism that's guiding us, you know, to a balance point or to a healthy point is also recovered. So that gives you information but also the person information? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So when you're thinking about just going for a regular massage with oils and stuff and you're wondering why you're not feeling really great afterwards mm -hmm. or there's a big huge change and release of all that stress you've been carrying around you want to think more about looking into light body activation right well i think that all forms of body work can have a really positive effect on the system and sometimes the priority is that deep muscle work mm -hmm. but then the person might have deep muscle work and the priority shifts and so if they keep having deep muscle work, it'll reach the point of diminishing returns in terms of the effect. So since I don't do deep muscle work, if I get to that point where it's a priority, I'll refer a client to do that for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you see the need for it sometimes, but then other times you see it's important to work beyond it. Yeah, and sometimes it's, uh, the, the priority is residing in the structural aspect. So they need to have physical adjustments, like the hip structure is skewed. And if this hip structure is skewed, that can be putting compressions mm. on some very vital organs, like elimination organs, uh, reproductive organs. And so when we adjust that physical structure, it could be, if it's a priority, that it will release the activity within those systems and help to normalize it. So you consider all these treatments and and integrate them all together so we've got the food we've got the exercise and then we've got all the different massages and then we have light body activation yeah and uh, that includes craniosacral work or certain forms of chiropractic work um, you know and a lot of practitioners are um, you know multi-dimensional practitioners so they can do structural work they can do deep muscle work uh, and it's important as a practitioner to understand what you know and can offer and what you don't know and need to refer because, uh, and it's a, an important part of our course is to notice where is that priority of the person's system. It could even be to have counseling for some period of time. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and not a physical and type of therapy at all. And we have a picture of um, you demonstrating on a girl. Looks like another person's under there. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a human right there. On, on there yeah. <laughs> Um, and you are sort of scanning the body for any clues as to um, how her system is handling stress or? Yes, mm -hmm. and just looking at that, well, the picture that was there before, I could have been uh, either checking the uh, alignment of the spine there in the lumbar region, but also there's a very important relationship between the structural part of the body 
and how the body is able to receive and act on the information from energy fields such as chakras, what are called chakras. So that's a whole other explanation. But there's seven major chakras. They circulate through the physical body if the physical body's clear, and they activate different things like physiological processes, emotional states, psychological states, and eventually what people might refer to as spiritual states. Mm -hmm. So if the, uh, the misalignment of a vertebrae or there's a, a lesion of the tissue there, then it will interfere with the communication coming from those chakras. So in a picture like that, I might have been testing that. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make uh, clear for our audience, you offer courses, and these are online or in person in um, Bucks County. Yes. And um, you can order this book. It's a, uh, right on your website. What is your yes. website? ShintaiInternational.com. So S-H-I... S-H-I-N, Thai, T-A-I, and then international, all one word, shintaiinternational.com. And um, you can learn more about, this is a really nice book, beginner book on what is shintai and um, light body activation. And um, you can also contact Saul for any treatments and information. He's a wealth of knowledge in terms of, um, I just, I'm so happy to have you on the show. Um, in terms of body work, I mean, absolute genius who's oh, we'll gone <laughs> on his, uh, studied um, for years, you know, how the body works and how to diagnose it and how to work with it. And I'm really blown away by um, the work that you've done with stress. I think that's so important in this day and age that we learn not to carry that bundle of stress around with us that really would hinder our health. And, uh, energy fields. Yeah. So it's uh, www.shintaiinternational.com. Mm -hmm. yep. And I encourage you, you have a workshop coming up. We have a light body activation that's going to happen from November 6th to 10th. And like uh, Sherry mentioned, um, it can be taken uh, live stream. So we regularly have people from all over the world dropping in um, from New Zealand, Austria, Ireland, everywhere. And that's a lot of fun uh, to interact with the live group and also the live stream group. And by the end of uh, by the end of the seminar, it feels like the live stream people are there in the room with and us. Personal, yeah, like and that's so, so great for together. you guys, for our viewers all over the world to yeah. uh, log in and see Saul and get some of this great information. I love the treatments; they're they're well, thank you. astounding. Uh -huh. So thanks for coming on our show. It's been wonderful having you and. I hope to continue my studies with you well, throughout the years. I'd like to thank you yes. and say that you made me feel very um, relaxed and calm sitting here and talking about all this. Oh, great. And I think you do a really great job, too. Oh, so thanks. Thanks a lot, Sherry. Oh, thanks. Make sure to check us out on the website.